The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, we've got another beautiful sunset and five ways to widen any sound in your track. If you're making music that is going to go beneath a vocal, you're going to need all five of these tricks, I can guarantee you. The first one we're going to talk about is just plain and simple panning. The example that I got pulled up is a beat I threw together using loops from Hot Tropics Bundle and Acoustic Progressions. I've got three of the acoustic guitar stems out of this folder here laid out on top of one another and we're just going to give this a quick listen. Very simple production, but it's not as wide as it could be. It's already got a cool vibe and it's kind of spacey and echoey sounding, but it certainly could use a lot more width. So let's dive in to number one is panning. And this is the easiest, my go-to. You simply pick an element in your song and let's start with the acoustic guitar here at the top. And to kind of counterbalance it, I'm gonna pick another element. I've got another layer of acoustic guitar, just more of like a percussion layer, but still an acoustic guitar. We're gonna create a little bit of a stereo image with these. So sending one to the left ear and one to the right ear. What a difference that made already. Back to center. And nice and wide. And you could do this effect to the extreme. If you were gonna put other more important musical instruments over these and you wanted these to be background elements, I for sure would be running them full left and right. But since this beat is really going to be about the acoustic guitar and the organic drum groove, I'm going to leave these a little more towards the center. And I'm purposely picking a different number on each. That's going to give us a slightly more natural spread of this ensemble, if you could call it that. The next thing that we're going to try is some stereo widening plugins. And if you're using just Ableton plugins for this, I would probably just group these and then use the mid side function on EQ eight. Probably just grab the sides and boost them up a little bit with the shelf. But even this is not that dramatic of an effect. So for a much more dramatic effect, I would go for a third party plugin like Side Widener, made by the same people who brought you JST Clip, featured in my clipping video. And I'll put a link to that in the description if you wanna see all about clippers and limiters and what have you. But today's about width. is pretty cool. You just gotta turn it down a little bit. And just do the really bright stuff on the outside. Turn that off. This is my favorite one, but they're all pretty similar. There, another really good one is Stereo Delta. Similar concept, but a little bit less options. So I find myself going for the side widener more. Does your master chain sound a little weak sauce? Do your tracks lack organic flavor and quality? Maybe you're just missing the sauce. Introducing Master Sauce, our organic blend of Ableton effects that'll get your master so crispy you might never use another plug-in chain again. Master Sauce is available now only at wholeloops.com. If the widening plugins 
aren't really giving you the effect you're looking for. You're looking for more of a bigger kind of wide rather than just like a push to the left or to the right kind of wide. Then you're going to want to go ahead and use a reverb to achieve some width. And to do that, let's try putting some reverb on our little strum channel. There sounds like there's already a little reverb on here, but actually we tracked these guitars out in the living room of my apartment. And it's a trick I do all the time for making my recordings sound bigger is just track them in the most acoustically reflective place possible, which is normally the opposite of what you'd go for. But let's say we want to do more of a noticeable reverb. I'll grab the Ableton reverb since this will work just fine for this. Do a, another chain for your dry signal. That way you have both 100% reverb and 100% dry coming out of this channel. And take the dry and put it in one ear and the reverb and put it in the other ear. And then you could take this and put it back to center because now you're doing some panning here in the rack. So let's take a listen to this. So we're getting the Ableton reverb in the left ear and the dry guitar in the right ear. Without it, and with it. And obviously you don't have to do full left and full right. I just like doing it on the most extreme settings possible so you could hear it clearly. The next trick that I use all the time for stereo widening is a delay. And Ableton's got the sauciness delay to ever come with a DAW echo. And we're gonna start out by using this as a ping pong delay. So I'm gonna group this up just like we did with the reverb, put the wet dry on 100% and then switch this to ping pong. Hey, even some reverb on the delays. filter on the delays. Maybe even a little wobble on the delays. And we can even sidechain our delays to the dry signal here inside the plug. Now that's a very lush, beautiful effect. Let's say you wanted to do a less noticeable effect that was more of just a utility to make the sound wider. Let's switch this from ping pong back to the normal mode. And I'm gonna open the filter up a little bit more so that we can hear some of the strumming on the top end. Even these out. But now that they're the same volume, let's pan the echo to the left ear and the dry signal to the right ear. And I'll rename these, this is more easy to understand what's going on here. Let's go into this, we'll turn both of these off because these are both gonna give kind of an extreme effect as well. And let's change it from sync to time and pull this back. separation between the left and right ear really lies within the time knob on any delay plugin that you're using. And again, you don't need Echo or Ableton to do this. You could do a return track and just pan the return track and then pan the source track. But Ableton obviously has the most amazing shortcut in the world for it, which is why I make my beats in Ableton. Well, there you have it. Those are my top five shortcuts for making your beats nice and wide. And like I said, if you're gonna have some vocals over your instrumental, these techniques are so crucial to getting a decent mix in the end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the tips and tricks in this tutorial useful, and I'll catch you next time with another tutorial. Peace out.